Dr. Mike, host of the iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. And yes, I am a real doctor. But that's not why I'm here today. I'm here to talk about saving money. You know, in my private practice, I see patients all the time that are coming in with problems with cash flow. Perhaps they've lost a job, or maybe they've had to take a pay cut, or maybe they just don't manage their money very well. And as the economic times have changed, these patients have increased the number. So I'm going to tell you some ways that I've learned how to save money. And actually the way that we're going to talk about today is bagging your lunch. Now you may think, what does this doctor know about brown bagging a lunch? Actually this talk is beyond the brown bag, but what do I know about doing that? Well I'll tell you that I've been packing a lunch for about 40 years. In fact, in the beginning, it was strictly out of uh, desperation and no money, to the point where I was actually making my own yogurt. More recently, of course, it's more about convenience. I work very, very long hours. Sometimes I have to pack a lunch, a snack, and a dinner, and sometimes even a breakfast, because I'm working 12, 13, 14-hour days. So I'm kind of an expert. I've been doing it for years, and I would like to pass on some of those tips to you. CBS recently had a story where they looked at this and they said that the average person could save over $2,000 a year just by pa uh, packing a lunch. And in fact, I've seen some things on the internet where individuals have said they've saved over $3,000 a year doing this. So we're talking about big money. Think about what you could do with $2,000. Well, of course, the first thing you should do is put it in the bank for an emergency fund or a nest egg or something like that. But if I just gave you $2,000 and I said spend it on anything that you want, you could buy a nice laptop plus a big screen flat screen TV. You could go on a very nice trip. Think about all the gas that you could buy for that amount of money. So this very simple act could save you a lot of money. Now multiply that over yourself, your partner, if you have kids, your kids, talking about a lot of money now. Well, so I really believe these little things can do it, and I think this is one way that's easy for anyone to save money. Well, you might think to yourself, come on, Doc, I know how to pack a lunch. Just put a PB&J sandwich in a bag, throw in a Diet Coke, and you're all set. Well, that's true. Everyone knows how to do that. But really, if you do that day in and day out, what you're going to find is that you're going to be really, really sick of those sandwiches after a week, and then you're going to start buying lunches again, and all that effort and energy has been lost. We're going to focus on several things, and we're going to look at this in a more scientific way. So I'm going to ask you to look at what your needs are, and then we're going to look at different ways that you could fulfill those needs. What are your needs? Is it strictly to save money? Most people who pack a lunch do it to save money, but there are other reasons too. As I said before, I do it now mostly for convenience. You may do it because you have a special need. Maybe you're on a special diet, you're on a weight loss plan, or you eat only kosher, or you have a wheat intolerance or something like that. So in situations like that, you might need to pack a lunch. Now, let's say you're on a weight loss plan. Well, I guess you can go to the cafeteria and buy that same plain turkey sandwich every day, but that's going to be just like that plain peanut butter and jelly sandwich every day. You're going to get sick of it. Just think about the endless possibilities that you're going to have by bringing what you want in a portion size that you want every single day. Naturally, if you have higher wants as opposed to cost savings, it's going to cost you more. So if you're packing special foods, like kosher foods, for instance, that's going to cost more than if you're making your own yogurt. Well, I'd like you to also look at your resources, and this is what I'd like you to think about today. We all have different resources when it comes to bringing a lunch. I drive a car, so I can pretty much bring anything with me. Perhaps you take a bus or a train. Well, now you're going to have to be a lot more selective because you're not able to bring so much in those vehicles. And so your packing techniques and your bag and all that will have to be a little bit different. It's definitely doable, but you're going to have to adapt around those needs. Let's take a look at a very classy break room. This is actually my break room in my private practice. This break room has just about anything that you would want for as far as making a meal. You have a full-size refrigerator, you have a full-size stove, a microwave, you have a sink, 
and my favorite, the hot water dispenser. So in this kind of setting, you can do anything. Let's take a look at a more typical break room. This break room has a commercial microwave, a sink with some paper towels, and you can't see it in the uh, picture here, but there's also a refrigerator that's shared by a great number of individuals. Here again, pretty adaptable to your needs, but less adaptable than the deluxe one that I showed you. But there are other situations too. What happens, for instance, if you have a lunchroom? Does that lunchroom maybe just have a water fountain? Or maybe this is a school lunchroom? Now I'll tell you, my kids love packing lunches. They don't like buying a lunch in the lunchroom. So they always pack one, or 99% you know, they pack one. My daughter loves chocolate milk. We have found that if she brings her sandwich to the cafeteria, she can buy a chocolate milk at a very reasonable price and she gets the best of both worlds. So doing a little mixing and matching can be helpful too. Maybe you have a very highly subsidized cafeteria and it's actually cheaper to buy the lunch than it is to make the lunch. Those situations are becoming more and more rare, however, because uh, everyone's cutting costs. Well, what happens if you don't have those sorts of, uh, of uh, things available? Let's say you're out in the field someplace, or you have to eat on the go, or you're a construction worker. Well, here you're not going to have a microwave, or water, or electricity, or any of those things, but certainly there's things that you can do with a little planning, including using a thermos. Let's say you have a few things available. Water in any source. It could be a, a sink, a water fountain, even a bathroom faucet, and electricity. Well, now you're talking about the ability to use a hot pot or one of those electric kettles. And with hot water, you can do a lot, a lot of different things. And we'll talk about some of those things as these uh, talks progress. So I'd like you to think very carefully about your resources because your resources will dictate what you can bring and what you can eat. And if you think in those terms and you're at the grocery store, for instance, you're going to think, hey, I can use that or this will work fine, but that won't. Well, in the other talks, the other parts of this talk, we're going to talk about other things. We're going to talk about the hardware of packing a lunch. Now, you think hardware? Is he talking about computers? No, I'm talking about the stuff. That, in fact, most of you probably have this laying around the house already. The containers, the utensils, uh, all that sort of thing that can make your, your lunch packing uh, an enjoyable experience. Then we're going to have a talk about software, or actually the food and the types of food that you can bring. And we'll look at all the different types from traditional packing to dehydrated to frozen to you name it. Then I'm going to look at packing a lunch. I'm going to show you how I actually pack a couple of meals for a day to show you how easy it is. And possibly, I'm thinking about this, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this yet, but maybe in the last episode I'm going to actually do a little cooking for you just to show you how you can do a little pre-cooking to make some wonderful stuff that's very inexpensive, that will really enhance your packaged lunch. So you know, that's it. I hope you tune in for the other parts of the show because I think you're going to save some money. Stay tuned.